if you haven't already heard, 8K TV is here. Well, at least the TVs themselves are. You can already buy one from Samsung and every other major TV manufacturer is bringing at least one model to market later this year. So what does that mean to you? Should you consider buying one? And wait a second, what happened to 4K? Well, to answer those questions, I thought it'd be fun to do a little comparison. So here we go, we're gonna compare 8K versus 4K versus good old 1080p HD. We're gonna start with 1080p or full HD because many of you still have this kind of TV in your home and maybe just haven't upgraded to 4K yet. On a 1080p TV, you get 1920 horizontal by 1080 vertical lines of resolution. Those lines are made up of little squares called pixels, and with a 1080p TV, you get over 2 million of them. On a 4K TV, you get 3840 horizontal by 2160 vertical, which amounts to over 8 million pixels. That's four times as many pixels, but you notice the TV didn't necessarily get any bigger. The pixels just got smaller. This is why, supposedly, we should get a more detailed picture from 4K content. So where does the term 4K come from? Well, it's not because it's four times the pixels, although that is true. It's because in true cinematic 4K, what you get at the movies, you actually get 4,096 horizontal lines. 4,000 lines equals 4K. But since the shape of our TVs haven't changed, there's not enough room for that many lines. So we call the slightly smaller version of what we get 4K anyway. That's not really the whole 4K story though, because along with most 4K TVs these days comes HDR. That stands for high dynamic range. And basically what that means is that you get more detail in the shadows and you get more levels of brightness, those bright accents that you see. And it affects color too, because you get brighter colors with more depth and more segmentation in the color scale. Most people say, and I totally agree, that HDR makes more of a difference than the 4K resolution itself does. Now we finally get to 8K, which is 7680 by 4320 for over 33 million pixels. That's four times as many as 4K and 16 times as many as 1080p. The pixels are even smaller now if you compare an 80 inch 8K to an 80 inch 4K TV. And I'm using 80 inches as an example because honestly, 8K resolution itself isn't meaningful in something like a 65 inch or 55 inch TV. You really need to go big to appreciate 8K resolution. And that partially explains why we're seeing 8K TVs. See, it's not really about the content, it's about the quality of the picture in something this big. More on that in a second. And I'd also like to point out that 8K TVs are gonna be a better alternative to elaborate projection systems. According to manufacturers, the average screen size in people's homes is going up. Here's the thing though, your living room isn't getting any bigger and you're not sitting any further away from the TV. So when you get a big display like that, you wanna take advantage of higher resolution. With that in mind, companies like Samsung, Sony, LG, TCL and others, they're looking into the future and figuring there's gonna be a need for this kind of thing in say seven years, which coincidentally is how long it's been since 4K TV came out. Also, manufacturers want to push the movie, TV, and broadcast industry into the future, and making an 8K TV is a way to do that. Now, what about content? Well, today there's plenty of 4K content to enjoy on Netflix, Amazon, Vudu, YouTube, and iTunes. Then there's 4K Blu-ray discs, and you can get some 4K on demand and on certain channels with a cable or satellite provider. But most of what you get on cable is still delivered in 720p, not even 1080p, and you're not getting HDR either. So a 4K TV has to upscale cable and satellite channels up to 4K, and that's a tough task. Sometimes it doesn't even look all that great. It's also worth pointing out that 4K content requires a lot more bandwidth when you stream it. So if you have a data cap, you might get close to using it up if you stream a ton of 4K content. And if you can't even get broadband, then you aren't going to be able to stream 4K. By that logic, you might think you would just skip on buying a 4K TV and get a 1080p TV instead. But just about every TV above 50 inches today is 4K. So just accept that's what you're gonna get and you may not be able to take full advantage of the TV's capabilities. So with all those struggles with 4K, then aren't they just amplified by 8K? 
Why are we talking about 8K right now? Well, actually, there's a very good reason. Yeah, it's gonna take a while to get 8K content, and when we do get it, it's gonna eat up a lot of bandwidth. So in the meantime, these 8K TVs need super powerful processors to upscale 720p, 1080p, and even 4K content so that it looks good on the screen. Otherwise, you wouldn't wanna buy it. And the examples I've seen from Samsung so far do that job really well, better than most of today's 4K TVs. And that's my point. If you're gonna buy a big, big TV, you might as well get one that's gonna make any kind of content look better at that screen size. So there you have it, 8K TV is here. The content is coming, but it's gonna take a while. We're definitely staring at the future, but we're going to have to be patient with the progress as it's being made. So should you buy an 8K TV right now? Well, honestly, that's a discussion for an entirely different video, but hopefully at this point, you understand a little bit more about what 8K TV is, how it works, and how long it's gonna to take to get to the future of television. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like and subscribe button, maybe even ring that bell. While you're here, here's two more videos we think that you might enjoy. And if you wanna learn more about this or any other great tech topics, be sure to visit digitaltrends.com.